to all welcome to this channel once again in this particular channel um, we'll be looking at some this channel is a, is a platform where we are going to get access to short smart easy and fast mnemonics and tricks to understand any concept that you think is very difficult so if you have any subject area that you feel is very difficult this is a channel to subscribe to in order to get access to very smart and easy tricks and understanding very difficult concepts and so in today's discussion we'll be looking at simple machines and there's three mnemonics we'll be looking in this particular video now the first one is look at play in between play in between play in between is one mnemonics we'll be looking at then the second mnemonics we'll be looking in this video is male 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 what does male do play in between male then the last one is the off moving part. So these are the three mnemonics we'll be looking up in this particular video. Don't forget to subscribe as you learn and have easy mnemonics and tricks and getting difficult concepts cleared off or understanding difficult concepts. And so don't forget to subscribe and like this channel, drop a comment as well. So let's zoom to today's discussion. Alright, so basically we, we are looking at that of the simple machine. When we talk of a, a, a simple machine, a simple machine is any device that makes work easier and faster. So any device that will make your work easier and faster, we call that one a simple machine. For instance, broom. Broom is a simple machine because broom helps you to make work easier. And broom we'll see in as we continue that broom is a part of this simple machine, which is under lever. Is that okay? So we have some examples of some simple machines. If you take knife, for instance, knife is a simple machine. You will discover why I'm saying knife is a simple machine. And then a uh, knife, knife, broom, catalyst, they are all simple machines. Okay, that of the uh, scissors, they are all simple machines. Now, in simple machine, we look at that of lever. Lever, we'll take lever into this also. This is a lever where we have the load, the pivot, and then the uh, effort as well. We have wheel and azo as well, another example of a simple machine. We have the screw, which is another example of a simple machine. We have the gear. In the gear, we have the driving and the driving wheel. And then we have the inclined plane as well, a simple machine. So these are examples of simple machines. Now, we would have to now look at the lever and talk about the types of lever, what a lever is, and the classification of levers. Is that okay? So let's now quickly look at lever and see the classification of levers. Now, don't forget that I say a simple machine, any device that make work easier and faster. And all these are simple machines that in one way or the other helps to make work easier and faster. We have complex machine like the tractor, we have the complex machine like this bulldozer and things. So, but then that's of a simple machine, very, very simple. They help, to, they help you to make, they help you to work easier and then faster as well. So those are the simple machines we are looking at. So we'll now look at the lever into detail and look at how it works and operates all right so the lever here we say when we talk of a lever a lever is just a rigid bar as you can see here okay we turns around a fixed point and this is a fixed point where it will be turning around so if they have to define lever lever is what a rigid bar we turns around a fixed point called pivot now we have liver which starts with L I V E R. That's an organ in the human body. Okay, that's a liver. That one is different from this. This is a simple machine. Now, if you look at the liver here, there are three main parts you have to know. We have to know the load, the pivot, and then the effort. Load, pivot, and effort. These are the three main parts of the liver. Okay, the pivot is also called the fulcrum. Now, if we look at the liver here, we have the load. Load is the first load and effort they are all forces load and effort they are all forces but the force that you are come by the effort we call load so load is the force that you are come with what the effort the load the force that you are come with under effort under force called effort so i think they have to define load and there was a past question uh, where students were asked to uh, define load so load is what this the, is a force okay a force to be overcome by the effort then if you look at that of the pivot or the fulcrum that's the turning 
turning all the rotational points on a lever where this lever rotates the fixed points where it rotates or turns that's the pivot and then if you look at the effort effort is what the force applied to overcome the load so the force that you are going to overcome the load becomes effort but the force that is overcome by the effort it becomes load this one overcomes this so this overcomes this this is overcome by this this overcomes this so load is a force overcome by the effort and then effort is a force applied to overcome load have you seen so these are it and the unit definitely for load be newton unit for effort will also be that of uh, um, newton as well so this is just a lever now the lever we have different classification and so we look at the first mnemonic the first mnemonic to look at the classifications remember we have the pivot the pivot so we have the pivot we have the load and we have the effort this three part so this three part based on the arrangement we will have three classifications of lever we have the first class lever we have the second class lever and we have the third class lever let's look at the classification of lever all right so the we have three classification of a lever so lever we have the first class lever we have the second class lever we have the third class lever to know the three types of lever look at the word play that's what i said play in between so the first one here first class p is first class and number two is what second class and this is what third class lever remember play first class second class and third class how do you use this play play in between to remember the types of lever now for first class lever the pivot is in the middle is in between for second class lever the load is in between it means the load is in the middle then the third class effort is in the middle so if you take the first class lever let's say for example i have a lever like this if the p which is pivot if pivot is in the middle pivot is in the middle p then it becomes first class so you can put l here you can put e here or somebody can put the effort here and put the load here it's still first class so we say first class what should happen for first class we should have p in the middle so the moment the pivot is in the middle it becomes first class so the load can be here and then the effort can be here or the load can be here and the effort is here it's still first class is that okay it's still first class now if you look at the second class we say for second class lever second class lever what should be the middle play p l e the if load is in the middle if load is in the middle so if you have load let's say load in the middle if load in the middle then become second class you can put the pivot here and put the effort here or somebody can put the effort here you can choose to put the effort here and put all right so as i was saying uh, for the second class we said we'll have what that's of the uh, load should be in the middle play e l here should be in the middle if the load is in the middle it becomes second class is that okay so you can have the effort here and then the pivot here or you can have the pivot here and then the effort here no matter what if the load is in the middle it becomes second class so this second class this second class then for third class for the third class what should happen is that what should be in the middle e p l e it means the effort in the middle so if the effort is in the middle we have effort in the middle if effort is in the middle no matter what you put if you put load here put pivot here it's still going to be that of what it's going to be a uh, third class so third class we should have the load the effort in the middle efforts in between so the moment effort is in between we call it that of the the third class lever so we have first class second class and third class let's look at some examples of the first class so if they ask you what is the first class lever we say a first class lever is a lever where the pivot is in between the effort is in between so the pivot is in between the load and the effort what is second class is a second class lever is what the lever where the load is in between the pivot and the effort what is a third class lever a third class lever is a lever where the effort is in between the pivot and then the load and that makes the definition for first class second class and third class now let's look at some example of the first class some example of the second class and some examples of the third class as well all right so as you can see for the first class we said play p l e if p is in the middle become first class if l is in the middle become second class and if e is in the middle become third class so let's look at some examples so we have liver balance we have the pair of scissors we have even the seesaw yeah the seesaw 
we have the seesaw too. Seesaw is also part. So we have the um, liver balance, the pair of scissors, pliers, pincers, crowbar, claw hammer, cicatrice. Then we have the seesaw. And the seesaw, all these, the pivot is in the middle or the fixed point where the, 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 the liver rotates is in the middle. So we call down the first class. And the second class, the load is in the middle. So like knife, knife. The bottle opener, we have the paper cutter, we have the nail clipper or nail cutter, we have the stapler, then we have the nut cracker. All these ones, they are the second class. Then the fishing rod, if you look at the third class, the effort is in the middle. So we have the fishing rod, the broom, we have cutlass, we have pair of tanks, pair of sugar tanks, pair of sugar tanks, just one, it's one pair, pair of sugar tanks. And these are the third class, it's okay. So first class, second class, in that of the third class as well. Is that okay? All right, so let's cut the second mnemonics I talk, I talk about, which is law. So let's cut some basic terms in machine. Now we have mechanical advantage, and they can ask you to define mechanical advantage. There are, there are several past questions when students are asked to define mechanical advantage. So when we talk of mechanical advantage, remember male. If you remember male, look at male. MA is mechanical advantage. So it means the load over effort. Load over effort. So if you write load over effort, this is load. So load over effort. That's what becomes male. So male, remember L can be for E. Some students will write effort over load. So if you remember the mnemonic male, load before effort. So load over effort. It gives you a clone mechanical advantage you can just write if they ask to define mechanical advantage you can just write load over effort and it's correct or you can put in definition form the ratio of load to effort ratio of load to effort and that is correct now the second term is velocity ratio so that one so i help with the mnemonics velocity ratio remember the word velocity e can be for l and it's velocity is talking about distance over time right so velocity is talking about speed which is distance so i remember the mnemonic velocity here v e l so it means this particular one is going to be effort distance over load distance. You see, mil L can be for E, so it become load over effort. But velocity, because velocity we're talking about distance, you see effort distance over load distance. That's what I've written. Effort distance over load distance. Velocity, V L. V L. Is that okay? So that is effort distance over load distance. In, in, in definition form, if you want to write in a sentence, you can write the ratio of effort distance to load distance, which is also correct. And the third one is efficiency. When we talk of efficiency, efficiency here is the two things combined. But you know, we look at male before this. So we look at mechanical advantage over velocity ratio expressed as a percentage. So the ratio of mechanical advantage to velocity ratio expressed as a as what a percentage. Or you can just write this formula down and you are you are you are good to go. Then or you can write work stroke energy. You know, work and uh, energy is what the ability to do work, right? So work and energy have the same scenario as we look at in the previous video. So if you didn't watch the previous video, quickly go and watch the previous video that we talk about work and then forces. Then we have work. So we say work should energy output over work should energy input. So I remember, you know, this is where students make mistake. Output is at the top and the input is down. Okay, so you put the thing down, input. So input, so work output over input. Don't forget that one. Work output over input. If you have forgotten which of them should come first, remember work. O come. O is the first thing that comes. So the output should be at the top and input should be at the down. So work output stroke energy output over uh, um, that time is 100%. Then we talk of work output and work input. So they can give you a formula. They say find the work output. Anytime they remember, they'll tell you these two things. They'll oh, put in effort. You remember, you look, you'll, be, you'll be hearing that they put in more effort. So to put in more effort, they don't tell you put in more load, they say put in more effort, put in more effort. So work should energy input but effort, you are going to put in more effort. So effort times effort distance. And then work out is going to be load times load distance. Load times load distance. And we know the unit for work and energy is joules. Don't forget this. For velocity ratio, uh, uh, for work in, or, or energy output, that is load times load distance. These are all formulas. But you see the mnemonics, it gives you a very Easy way of remembering. They say find mechanical advantage. Remember male, me which means load over effort. They say find velocity ratio. Remember e before l. And velocity talking about distance, so effort distance over load distance. They say find efficiency. Remember mechanical advantage over velocity ratio, or work 
stroke energy output over work stroke energy input and you have gotten the formula if they ask you to find work stroke energy output that is load times load distance and work stroke energy work output work stroke energy input that give you effort times effort distance exactly now the question is why is that the efficiency of a machine is not 100 percent so we we'll use the third money to get that particular one all right so the last thing before um under efficiency do ask you why is that the efficiency of a machine is not 100 percent why efficiency of machines like less than 100 percent so the efficiency of a machine is less than 100 percent why so why the efficiency of a machine is less than 100 percent now you remember the moon as i told you he off moving part so he heard that the efficiency of a machine is less than 100 percent because some of the energies used to overcome heat heat some of the energy is used to produce heat that's the first reason why the efficiency of a machine is not 100 percent and the second one the efficiency of a machine is not 100 percent because some of the you remember of of so some of the energy is used to overcome overcome friction overcome friction and the third reason is that some of the energy is used to raise the move, moving parts of the machine and that's why if you buy a machine it's not 100 percent the efficiency Efficiency is not hundred percent. Efficiency is less than hundred percent because of the following reason. All right, so we have looked at machines in today's discussion. We look at the types of machine lever. Don't forget. Let me quickly remind you. We have pulley. Pulley is also another type of a uh, simple machine where we have pulley. We have a pulley. Okay, we have a pulley this way. Okay, sometimes we can have two of them. So we have a pulley and these are all um, simple machines so um, don't forget to subscribe and um, in the next video we'll be looking at how to calculate the basic term look at how to calculate for the mechanical advantage how to calculate for the velocity ratio how to also calculate for the efficiency and when they give the efficiency how can you calculate for the mechanical advantage so in the next video we'll be looking at the calculations and the mechanical advantage velocity ratio and then efficiency as well thank you for following to this time do have a nice time